I would like to uh, introduce you our first speaker, uh, Professor Van de Bruyne de Bruyne, the PI of this seminar series. She holds a leadership chair in behavioral decision making at the Leeds University Business School, uh, where she also serves as the co-director of the uh, Center for Decision Research. She holds affiliations with Carnegie Mellon University in the United States, the Rand Corporation, and the University of Southern California. Her research interests are uh, behavioral decision making, risk perception and communication, behavior change interventions, as well as individual differences in decision making competence across the lifespan. She is a member of the Scientific and Technical Committee of the International Risk Governance Council, which provides evidence based advice to international policymakers. She has contributed her expertise to workshops and expert panels organized by various international organizations, including Health Canada, the UK Food Standards Agency, the US Environmental Protection Agency, Federal Reserve, and Food and Drug Administration. So thank you for this very kind introduction. Thank you all for coming to participate in this food seminar series. Um, I'd also like to thank, of course, our funder, the Economic and Social Research Council in the UK, for providing the finances to um, hold this seminar series about food. And uh, I want to thank uh, Gubanu, Nikki, Nick, and Hannah, um, and Sonia for putting so much effort in, in putting these seminars together. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a brief introduction to explain why we want to have these seminar series. <coughs> And to do so, I'm going to give you a little bit more information about my own research interests and my background. Um, so, um, like Ulbanu said, I am Professor of Behavioral Decision Making here at the University of Leeds. And that means that I'm interested in how people make decisions. So I'm not an, an expert on food decision making per se, but I'm generally interested in how people make decisions. And I'm a co-director of the Center for Decision Research, which is a center that brings together um, researchers who are interested in how people make decisions in different domains, including um, health. So we study how people make decisions about their health. We study how people make decisions about their finances and about their environmental impacts. And so if our research finds that people have difficulties in making those decisions, we aim to test and design messages, interventions, to help people to make more informed decisions. And because we apply our methods and, and, and theories and findings across those domains, we think that makes our um, efforts stronger. So let me give you a couple of examples of the projects that we're working on in our center. By the way, this is not everybody. It's hard to get everybody um, present at the same time, but this is um, a chunk of us. And uh, we do work right now, for example, on public perceptions of climate change and weather, on public preparedness for heat waves, on helping consumers in financial distress, and we also are working on informing consumer decisions about food, um, as, and we're, that's why we're organizing this seminar series. And so if you look at communications about food, then you'll see that um, professionals including academics, practitioners, policymakers, they communicate with consumers about food with different goals in mind. So one common goal is to improve nutrition. And it's important to improve consumers' nutritional choices because unhealthy food choices lead to 62% of UK adults to be overweight or obese, and that costs the NHS an estimated five billion pounds per year. Other communications, um, that uh, professionals share with consumers might focus on improving food safety. That's also important because in the UK alone there are 17 million cases of foodborne illnesses per year, including 20,000 hospitalizations and 500 deaths. And then a third goal that you'll often see in communications about food um, aim, uh, is to uh, reduce food waste. And that's important because UK households produce an estimated 4.2 million tons of food waste, preventable food waste, per year. And when I say preventable food waste, I mean this is food waste um, involving food that could have been eaten if people had planned better 
and not bought as much or prepared as much as compared to what they actually ended up eating. So now let's look at the messages that consumers are receiving. And I want to make the case that it can be potentially overwhelming and confusing to receive all those messages as a consumer. Um, so one of them is that it's good to lose weight, so you should not eat so much. Um, other messages focus on encouraging people to eat more, at least of specific foods. So as, for example, to avoid diabetes or um, to improve uh, cognitive functioning and be, and be more physically and mentally healthy. Other messages say, well, you shouldn't uh, eat too much of one specific type of food, but instead you should try to achieve a balanced diet. And all, all that keeping in mind, you should also try to reduce your calorie intake, reduce fat intake, salt and sugar intake. So if you're worried about nutrition, then there's, that is a lot of information to keep in mind. And um, consumers are not just receiving information about nutrition, but they're also receiving information about food safety. So let's look at some examples of those messages. So consumers are taught um, that um, it's important to prepare foods in a safe way. And they also receive information about food recalls. So this example is from um, when I was living in the United States and there was a recall of bagged spinach because of E. coli. And consumers were very concerned and so they reduced um, uh, or they, were, they, they, they avoided bagged spinach, but they also started to avoid other bagged vegetables that were not actually part of the food recall. And over time, as the food recall was lifted, um, you found that consumers were still avoiding bagged spinach and bagged vegetables. So a message about food safety can potentially harm the nutrition, nutritional value of people's diets if they start avoiding healthy foods, in this case, bagged spinach and vegetables. Um, and then other confusion may arise when you look at the dates that are on food products. It's not always clear that those dates are use by dates or sell by dates. So as a result, consumers may end up eating foods that are actually uh, not safe to eat anymore, or they may throw out foods when they're actually still edible if they misinterpret what those dates mean. Um, and so potentially that could lead to food waste. Food waste messages that consumers receive um, include, for example, a campaign by RAP, um, our project partner, which encourages consumers to love food and hate waste. And as part of this intervention, um, it is pointed out that it's important to plan while purchasing and preparing food so as to reduce waste, so that you actually prepare what you're going to eat. Um, supermarkets also have waste reduction campaigns. And those campaigns are often specifically focused on um, discouraging people from buying too much uh, bagged salads, for example. Um, that is one example of a product where people buy it, eat part of it, and then it, the rest of it goes bad in the fridge. Um, now, of course, one potential risk with those kinds of messages is that consumers decide to avoid uh, healthy uh, fresh foods and vegetables altogether so as to avoid food waste. But that's of course not good for nutrition. So um, when you look at these different messages, I think that there are a couple of communication challenges that are important for the domain of food that are actually not specific to just the domain of food. You will also see those challenges happen in other domains. And that's why the risk communication literature has some recommendations of how to deal with those challenges. So I'll highlight them. So one is, um, one challenge that I see is that we want to help people to make more informed decisions about food, including food safety, food waste, and nutrition. And all the different messages that people are receiving can become a little bit complex. And so it's difficult for people to understand all of that information. It may also be difficult for communicators to decide what exactly to focus on. That's why the risk communication literature recommends involving um, an interdisciplinary team of experts when developing messages to make sure that the relevant information is being shared um, in terms of what people need to make more informed decisions. 
So in the domain of food, that means involving experts or professionals working in nutrition, food safety, and food waste. Um, now I think it's important not just to include uh, technical experts. The risk communication literature also recommends that, um, or notes that it's important to involve social scientists and psychologists um, who have an understanding of what drives people's, people's behaviors, uh, what drives behavior change. A second challenge that I see is creating messages that consumers understand. This is not uh, specific to just messages about food. You see this in a lot of domains where professionals working in the domain, whether they are academics, practitioners, or policy makers, um, they have been highly educated in that domain. That's why they're experts. Uh, but as a result, they don't think or talk like experts anymore, right? Ex um, when you're a professional in a specific domain, you're uh, used to using specific types of wording to better communicate with your experts, uh, with your expert colleagues, but it doesn't mean that non-experts will understand um, that kind of wording. Um, that's why it's important to conduct research with members of your intended audience. The risk communication literature suggests that it's important to do interviews, surveys, experiments in psychological labs to better understand how consumers make decisions and what kind of wording they prefer when they talk about their decisions. If you've done research with your intended audience, it's more likely that the messages uh, that you develop uh, will use wording that consumers understand and will address topics that consumers actually want to know about and need to know about to make more informed decisions. A third challenge that I see is um, that we want to um, develop messages that um, achieve our goals without necessarily having a negative, ne negative effect on other goals. So, for example, we want to develop messages about nutrition um, that don't affect food safety, or messages about food safety that don't affect food waste. Um, and so the recommendation from the risk communication literature would be to test our interventions before sharing them with our, our audiences to, um, so that we have a better understanding of, our, of whether our messages actually achieve what we want them to do and whether they don't have any unintended consequences on consumer behavior. Now, of course, that may sound very simple. It's not that simple to implement. If you want to learn more about how to do this, there is a literature out there. And so I want to highlight some of them. So for example, um, there is a book uh, developed by engineers, um, for engineers, on how to uh, communicate with um, non-experts about new technologies. Another one that I can recommend is from the US Food and Drug Administration. It's available for free download through this link. And it is a how-to guide that describes in simple terms how to develop effective messages, even on a low budget. And then if you uh, don't mind a little bit of self-promotion, I recently wrote a paper for the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences with Ann Bostrom about um, how to actually conduct interviews, surveys, psychological experiments to better understand how consumers make decisions so that that can then inform uh, new messages um, aimed at consumers. And if you don't like to read, there is also a YouTube video in which I discuss those recommendations in detail. And that was for the US National Academy of Sciences. OK, so um, now uh, the literature is, is um, focusing on a lot of different domains. And we want to apply this, of course, to the domain of food. And that's why we wrote a proposal to the ESRC to fund our seminar series that focuses on messages about uh, nutrition, food safety, and food waste. Um, the team um, involves myself as a PI, um, and I know about risk communication. Um, our co-directors are Nikki Baun and Gulbanu Kaptan, and respectively, they have expertise in uh, communica developing communications about food waste and food safety. Um, we have Louise Dai, um, who uh, is an expert on nutrition and effects of nutrition on uh, cognition and health. 
uh, Professor Lynn Frewer, who is an expert on food safety communications. And we have Sean Thomas from the Food Standard Agency and Tom Quested from Waste and Resources Action Program. Um, so they are working to um, improve food safety and reduce food waste. Um, and so this is the team that we brought together to write the proposal and we are hoping to bring together a wider community of professionals working on the domains of food waste, food safety and nutrition uh, to uh, achieve the following aims, hopefully. One is to build a network um, of academics and practitioners working on these topics. Two is to promote new research and outreach activities so that we can be more effective in reaching consumers. And of course, ultimately what we want to do is to identify communication strategies for better informing consumers' food choices so that consumers can enjoy more nutritious diets, better food safety, and reduce food waste. So thank you very much for coming and I hope you have a productive and interesting day. Thank you.